Uh, hello friends, uh, welcome to this uh, week 11 and lecture 4 of this course of soil and water conservation engineering and we were studying in this week 11 about the wind erosion and different control measures. Okay. So, in the in this lecture we will be understanding the uh, process uh, and different kinds of sand dunes and the formation of sand dunes. So, like uh, so far now we have covered uh, uh, we have seen uh, we have studied the four lectures we have studied what is wind erosion uh, what are the different factors that are associated uh, or that can trigger the wind erosion and uh, different types of sand movement uh, initiation uh, detachment detachment initiation then transport and deposition different types of soil particle movement depending on their size uh, and grade so that we have seen we have also seen uh, the different uh, uh, different kind of uh, uh, wind erosion control measures to uh, to reduce the effect of wind speed. So, uh, we have seen the some measures to reduce the velocity of the wind and some measures to uh, to make soil surface more uh, uh, make soil surface more resistant to the wind erosion. Okay. And then we have seen the design of uh, uh, some structure which can reduce the wind speed. So, for example, wind break design of wind break we have seen and we have also seen the design of shelter belt. Okay. So, in this uh, lecture, so today we will be understanding uh, the sand dunes, their formation and their different uh, different types of sand dunes, uh, sand dunes and how they form. Okay. So, let us start this lecture. Okay. So, before that this thing also uh, we already discussed that, uh, that uh, to uh, this initiation of soil particle uh, from this initiation of this wind erosion when it start. So, the wind velocity should be actually greater than threshold velocity, some minimum threshold velocity, but uh, we can see not only that threshold velocity that defines the amount of sand transport, but it the uh, wind should be above some threshold, wind should be above some threshold with some with some certain drift potential. So, so, th that kind of wind will prevent vegetation growth and will prevent the stabilization over that region. Okay. So, the wind uh, should be above the threshold with some certain drift potential uh, that prevents vegetation growth and stabilizing it. So, we know that this quantity of sand flux or sand quantity of sand moved is actually directly proportional to the velocity cube. Okay. So, we can approximate that quantity by this equation. So, here q is a rate of sand drift. Uh, in one particular direction. So, q is equal to some constant k multiplied by uh, u star square uh, in, into uh, difference between the threshold and the frictional velocity. So, here u star uh, represent the frictional velocity that is not the actual uh, velocity. So, it is actually frictional velocity u star and u t star is the threshold frictional velocity and the difference between them when multiplied with the square of frictional velocity and with some constant and with the constant that depends on the uh, uh, soil parameters like grain size, sand sorting and uh, density of air. So, related to the surface uh, and uh, surface condition. So, we can get the rate of sand drift. Okay. So, here this frictional velocity is we know that frictional velocity is actually the uh, square root of shear stress divided by density of the fluid. Okay. Okay. So, here q is the rate of sand drift. Uh, u star is a frictional velocity, u t star is equal to uh, is actually the threshold frictional velocity uh, and this uh, rho is of uh, fluid density <coughs> and k is any constant that depends on variables such as grain size, sand sorting and air density okay. Okay, and tau is a shear stress. Okay, so, uh, so, this uh, we can approximate this, uh, we can approximate a drift, a sand drift in one particular direction by this equation which is given by let out uh, which is given by let out and let out. Okay. So, we can approximate the sand drift uh, by this equation which is given by let out uh, 1978. Okay. So, here we can say that uh, the quantity of sand drift in one particular direction is given by u square uh, multiplied by u minus u t divided by 100. So, here u is the uh, wind velocity which is measured at a 10 meter height, uh, let us say 10 meter height and uh, which is given by this equation, u can be calculated uh, like this frictional velocity divided by k uh, into uh, natural log of 
ratio between uh, z and z 0. So, z is any height z 0 is a uh, roughness height okay. and here t here is actually the amount of time the wind is above the threshold. So, percentage it is actually percentage. So, percentage amount of time uh, during which the wind is above the threshold. So, uh, as we said this wind above this drift potential can prevent the vegetation growth and can and stabilizing it. Okay. So, this is a, this equation gives us the simple drift potential uh, uh, it is actually sum of uh, all drift potential in all direction. Okay. So, this will be needing in the subsequent slide. So, uh, so we will move to the next slide. So, this directional uh, variability of wind if you want to estimate. So, this was technique was given by Freiberger uh, and Dean technique. So, so, this technique can be used to, to estimate the potential sand drift on loose dry sand and minimum vegetation. Okay. So, these are the assumption loose and dry and coarse sand with minimal vegetation. Okay. So, what we can do actually. So, if we have a wind data at one particular height. So, we can uh, we can find the direct, uh, frequency of the uh, sand drift in uh, particular direction specifically 16 direction 16 identical oh, sorry 16 directions. Okay. Okay. So, and we can plot it in the form of this uh, this diagram. So, this diagram is known as the, uh, the annual sand flow regimes or also known as the, these are the sand roses. Okay. So, here uh, this individual arrow, this, this individual arm that represents the relative magnitudes of sand drift from each direction category. Okay. So, we need to calculate the sand drift in each direction uh, given by the equation q. Okay. Uh, so, that represent the relative magnitude of sand drift in that particular direction, direction category. Okay. So, accordingly that we will plot all the arms. Uh, and next is we, we need to calculate the drift potential. Okay. So, drift potential is actually sum of annual rates of sand drift from all winds uh, all uh, from all wind speed direction. Okay. So, if we sum all this uh, annual rates of sand drift from all direction we will get drift potential. So, it is a sum of uh, annual rates of sand drift from all wind speed direction. Okay. Then the resultant drift we need to calculate resultant drift potential. Okay. So, this resultant drift potentials are actually the representative vectors uh, that represent the net uh, sediment transport uh, uh, net resultant sediment transport. Okay. So, suppose these are all the winds vector wind vector in different direction and this is the vector represent the net sediment transport. So, this uh, this figure shows uh, the uh, different types of uh, at different locations uh, resultant drift uh, directions. Okay. So, this is a resultant direction here, here the result di direction is this, this is the resultant direction and this ratio is the ratio between uh, resultant drift potential uh, divided by drift potential. So, this is the ratio of R d p by d p this is also known as the uh, uh, directional uh, uh, directional uh, directional variability index. Okay. Okay. So, uh, it is let us see here. So, in this case in the first case uh, the there are uh, very less variability. So, the winds are mostly in this direction and this direction uh, and the in other direction the winds are very less okay. in the first case I am talking about. So, there are very less winds uh, or uh, drift uh, there are very uh, less amount of sand drift in uh, other direction uh, there are two more prominent direction and this is the resultant direction. So, if we take a ratio of this R d p by d p. So, this ratio is actually is uh, coming as 0 0.86 which is close to 1. So, what it means that that uh, it is a unidirectional or uh, narrow unimodal flow. Okay. So, flow is mostly in one direction. Okay. Uh, similarly, here the flow is spread in different direction uh, drifts are there in different direction. So, resultant uh, and resultant in this direction. So, so actually this ratio R d p by and d p it tells us about the, uh, the uh, direction in which sand, uh, sand drift is taking place. Okay. So, this d p by R d p values if they are close to 1 it indicates that narrow unidirectional uh, drift potential and if they are close to 0 if they are close to 0 then it indicates multidirectional drift potential. So, here we have a multidirectional wind uh, 
multidirectional drift potential. So, in the first case it was unidirectional, it is multidirectional here. So, as I said this drift potential uh, this uh, uh, index of uh, directional variability that is d p by r d p directional variability index uh, if their values are close to 1 it means that uh, the flow is uh, they have uh, it indicates the narrow unidirectional drift potential and if this ratio is close to 0 it is a it indicates uh, the possibility of multidirectional drift potential. Okay. So, so let us see one example here. So, if the low if the this ratio R d p by d p if it is low okay, if the ratio of R d p by d p if it is low that then it indicates the wind energy is distrib disturbed distributed on more than one slope of the dune and the energy exerted on each slope is lower. Okay. So, what it means? So, if the this R d p by d p is less it means so the wind uh, wind energy is evenly is uh, not evenly it wind energy is distributed in different directions. So, so the there is a drift in all in different directions. Uh, so, it indicates that the wind energy is distributed on more than one slope of the dune and energy exerted on each slope uh, on each slope is lower. Okay. So, that that results into the lower R d p by d p ratio. Similarly, high directional variability index. Okay. So, if this index values are high it means sand dunes are covered by vegetations on their slopes. So, this vegetation they actually uh, reduce the, the erosiveness of wind. So, they can reduce the erosion. So, so the uh, high, high direction this ratio R d p by d p indicates the sand dunes are covered by vegetation. So, if this uh, drift potential is same it means quantity of soil sand sum of uh, sand uh, drift in all particular direction if it is remain same and still we get this uh, low low rate of directional variability then it indicates the dunes are uh, dunes are bare of vegetation so uh, there is a minimal vegetation on that uh, on the surface okay so with that uh, using this uh, technique we can find out the directional vari directional variability of sand drift okay uh, and we can decide whether the vegetation uh, uh, the current form the uh, current nature of uh, uh, soil surface over that region Okay. Uh, now, this figure shows uh, this is actually a curve uh, which represent the wind threshold speed curve for sand transport. Okay. So, if we see here, uh, so on the x axis we have grain, grain diameter of different size, so it is square root scale and on the y axis we have frictional velocity uh, for uh, quartz grains of different diameters. Okay. So, we can see here uh, if the uh, size of the grain is let us say is in the range of 0 0.062 okay. if, if it is in the range of 0 0.062 to uh, let us say around uh, 2 mm diameter. So, most of the erosion is done by uh, wind erosion is done by saltation process. So, this uh, and this is the threshold velocity above which uh, the detachment or initiation start this is the threshold velocity frictional threshold velocity. Okay. So, grains of sand uh, between 0 0.062 and 2 mm in diameter they are actually not very much uh, cohesive and they, they can be easily eroded or they can be easily carried by the winds okay. and they can form and they can responsible into sand dunes. But if you see uh, the size is lesser than if the grain size is less than this value okay, like where uh, clay or silt or very, very, uh, very fine sand then in that case most of the erosion process is done by uh, suspension uh, suspension movement okay so this is the lowest uh, lowest limit of suspension okay so okay so here the mostly suspension is taking place for suspension is acting on very finer uh, grains uh, soil particle and saltation is acting on for, uh, grain of size size between 0 0.062 and 2 mm diameter and that are responsible for formation of sand dunes. Okay. So, the accumulation of this uh, sand blown by the wind it uh, creates the sand dune. Okay. Now, let us see the Eolian process. Okay. So, Eolian process Eolian is a word Greek word which is related to the wind. 
So, Eulian process uh, it can be defined as those which involve wind action that uh, wind action that is erosion, transport, transport uh, or deposition arising from movement of air over the earth surface. Okay. So, this alien process uh, or transport of wind uh, or transport of soil by wind uh, alien process can be defined as those which involve wind action uh, that is the erosion, transport and deposition arising from the movement of air above the over the earth surface. And we have seen the different mechanism by which sand particle or sand grains are uh, tra transport from one place to another place. So, the movement can be uh, by creep by rolling over the surface the suspension final for final particle suspended in the air and the saltation the vibration or jumping and bouncing nature of the uh, bouncing uh, motion of the sand okay so so th uh, this figure represent the movement of sand grains so this is a upwind side and this is a slip phase or leeward side okay so sand is being transported from one place to here uh, here okay uh, this is also uh, known as the windward side or straws side. Okay. So, this we will be seeing in the next uh, slides. Um, okay. Now, alien sand dunes uh, can be defined, the sand dune can be defined simply as a mount uh, or ridge that are formed by wind deposition on loose sand. Okay. So, it can be defined simply as a mount or ridge that are formed by wind deposition of loose sand. Okay. So, the, uh, the size can be the size of sand dune can be of variable size they can be either uh, around 1 meter or can be spread across several kilometers as well. Okay. They mainly occur either as isolated ridge or they can be grouped together okay. this, uh, and the classification and uh, the sand dunes are classified according to their geo geographical occurrences. Uh, either as a inland dune or uh, continental dunes or coastals or seashore dune or uh, in case of river river bank we can call it as river bank dune or lake shore dunes okay so these are the classification based on the their geographical location and their occurrence over that re region okay. and the modes of sand movements uh, can be either by natural sand drifting or uh, by dune migration So, dunes we have seen the it can be classified uh, they can be also classified based on uh, different uh, ways like size and shape of the dunes uh, their occurrence their environmental condition as I said the inland uh, seashore uh, coastal dunes okay, or river bank dune their uh, their growth stage okay, uh, the, uh, their growth stage uh, depending on the maturity level then the wind direction which is responsible for their formation. So, these are the different uh, ways uh, by which we can classify or we can name a particular dune. So, mostly based on the size, their occurrence, the environment, and environment in which they present, their growth stage and the wind direction which is responsible uh, for their formation. Okay. So, this is a very simplistic way to, uh, to represent the types of dune, it is a very simple geogram, geomorphological classification. So, dunes are mostly formed in the presence of let us say when there is enough availability of sand, uh, sand supply, wind magnitude, presence of vegetation and a presence of dry, dry climate. So, this is a very simple geo, uh, geomorphological uh, classification of dunes. Okay. So, uh, broadly they can be classified uh, such as transverse dune or barchan or crescent dune and longitudinal dunes and parabolic dunes. Okay. So, depending on the uh, percentage availability of sand, uh, sand supply, then uh, wind magnitude over that region and the presence of vegetation, they can be called as either transfer dunes or barchan or crescent dunes. So, we will be looking this, uh, we will be understanding this uh, dunes one by one in the subsequent slides. Uh, they can be also named as longitudinal dunes depending on the uh, variability of uh, different uh, parameters. Okay. So, let us say for example of transverse dune. So, we have very less vegetation and the sand supply is uh, around abundant sand supplies there. Uh, whereas, in parabolic dunes we have uh, enough or sufficient vegetation uh, and under the action of uh, wind uh, we have and the winds are also kind of abundant. Okay. So, these are the different simple geomorphological classification. 
uh, which can be used to define uh, or to categorize the dunes. Okay. So, we will be looking this uh, classification or each category one by one in the next slides. So, this is again the same image the forms of dunes. So, uh, here actually the same uh, like here the frequency in this direction vegetation is increasing, here the wind strength is increasing, here sand availability is increasing. Okay. Okay. So, so, there are different types such as longitudinal dunes when the winds uh, uh, when the winds are uh, when the wind speed is more wind strength is uh, more vegetation is le less so this is a linear or uh, longitudinal dunes so in case of barchan uh, in case of barchan we have the scarce sand supply uh, and the uh, vegetation is also less then the, then comes the transverse dunes when the sand supply is enough uh, trans uh, sand supply is enough uh, but the vegetation is less uh, and winds are also uh, kind, kind of less here uh, okay, uh, kind of uh, less or moderate in moderate form. Then, then comes the uh, st uh, star dunes which have steady and the directions are changing here. Uh, so, here the wind directions are subjected to change here in this region. Okay. So, we, uh, so in, in that region we get the star dunes uh, and the sand is also kind of uh, scarce or moderate uh, availability. Okay. So, this uh, sand dunes can be uh, so, these are the different uh, shapes of this dunes. This is the Barchan dunes, which has some uh, crescent or uh, some C shaped um, uh, C shaped crest. Then we have a star dunes, where the winds from different directions are uh, equally responsible. Uh, okay. Then transverse dune, which forms in the uh, which acts on the one particular ridge. Okay. Then we have a parabolic, which is exactly which is kind of opposite to the Barchan dunes, which is inverted U, inverted C here or U shaped. Then the longitudinal uh, dunes, uh, which flows actually where the uh, flow is uh, uh, along the along the ridge. Okay. So these are parallel to the uh, sand dunes. The flow is fly parallel to the sand dunes here. Okay. So here we have categorized the, the dunes based on the wind and sand availability. Okay. So, in Barchan dune we mostly get steady, steady wind in uh, mostly in one direction, in star we get uh, steady, uh, steady flow, but uh, mostly steady direction, but change uh, steady wind, but changing its direction uh, occasionally. Uh, okay. Then transfer dune steady and moderate uh, in one direction, parabolic steady wind with, uh, with strong magnitude uh, in one direction, longitudinal the steady and strong wind in one direction. Okay. So, let us see this uh, different types of dunes in the, in the next slides. Okay. So, this is actually first uh, let us see that Barchan dunes or uh, these are also known as the crescent dunes. Uh, so, these types of dunes actually mostly observed uh, in the sandy deserts uh, mo across the globe. Okay. So, the shape of these dunes are actually kind of C shaped. Uh, crescent shaped dunes with their tips pointing downwards. So, these the tips are the pointing downwards okay. and here there is a less availability of or, uh, or no, no vegetation availability. Uh, the sand supply is limited here the sand supply is limited and the flow is mostly steady here. The winds migrating uh, winds are migrating according to unidirectional wind mechanism. So, wind flow is mostly unidirectional, but they are migrate. Okay. So, these dunes are migrating according to the unidirectional wind mechanism. Occurrences, uh, these are actually mostly isolated dunes uh, located or different uh, place uh, or that region and it, they can migrate up to hundreds of meters each year okay. and they, they can grow up to 30 meter in height and they can be spread uh, around 30 meter uh, in distance. Okay. So, this is the Barchan dunes. Uh, okay. So, this is example of Barchan dune, this is an image of Barchan dune. So, here we can see movement of Barchan dune by erosion of windward phase and deposition on slip phase. So, so slip phase there is a deposition and on windward side uh, the erosion is taking place. Okay. Now, next type is a transverse dune. So, these are the these are actually the uh, uh, very much similar to Barchan dunes, but the when the, the sand supply in the Barchan dunes when it increases, 
then they convert into uh, they merge into transverse dunes. So, Barchan dunes merge into transverse dunes if the uh, if, if the supply of the sand increases. Okay. Mm, so, these are the transverse dunes. So, these are the transverse ridges and flow is in uh, mostly in unidirectional flow. So, we get a se series of dunes. Okay. So, shape dunes are aligned perpendicular to the prevailing wind as you can see the dunes are actually perpendicular to the uh, prevailing wind direction. Vegetation, vegetations are uh, vegetation is less and sand supply is mostly abundant. Uh, winds are actually steady and mostly one directional. Okay. Uh, this transverse dunes represent around 40 percent of the dunes found in the sand sea uh, across the uh, found in the sand sea world, worldwide. Okay. Okay. Now, next is the star dune. Okay. So, this, this is found in high desert latitudes where there are marked seasonal change in wind direction. So, wind directional uh, is changing occasionally here. So, we have different wind directions. So, the, so the movement of sand or uh, sand drift is in different direction. The shape is mostly pyra uh, pyramidal shape and this kind of dunes are mostly found in a desert latitudes. Okay. Uh, these are the dunes with several arms and variable slip face directions. So, slip face directions also different and the arms are there are many arms you can see here. Uh, sand supply is abundant here, the wind is multidirectional uh, and variable in nature and they can grow up to 500 meters of height. Uh, star dunes are formed by wind regime with a high directional var variability uh, that is a ratio of RDP by DP if it uh, less than 0.4. Okay. So, next next type is a parabolic dune. So, this is an inverted U kind of dune. So, these are mostly found in humid and cold areas. So, the shape of these dunes are U shaped or crescent shaped dunes, but in opposite direction. Uh, in case of Bajan, it was C shaped, here it is inverted C or uh, you can call it as U, U shape. Uh, vegetation is partly vegetated here, sand supply is limited, and the wind is mostly unidirectional wind, and they can grow up to 10 to 20 meters of height. The next is the longitudinal dunes. So, you can see in the longitudinal as its name suggests. So, the wind is actually uh, passing uh, is uh, parallel to the so, uh, so these crests are actually parallel to the wind direction. So, winds is uh, flowing uh, along the uh, or a length parallel to the uh, this ridges. So, shape of this uh, longitudinal dunes are um, shape long dunes are crest are uh, elongated parallel to the direction of wind flow. So, when I said this winds are parallel to the uh, as I said, the winds are parallel to the uh, to the crest. Okay, so these are parallel to the uh, dunes. Okay. Sand supply, sand supply is uh, limited here, and winds are mostly strong and steady. Now let's see uh, some some of the important uh, 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 mechanism by which sand dunes form. So this is the like we were for, we are talking about this coastal sand dunes. Let us talk about the coastal sand dunes. So, let us say this is a coast here. Uh, let us first we shall see the, this image. Okay. So, this is a coast and this is a, a la approximate strand line and from there you can see the uh, development of vegetation and the dunes here. Okay. So, the first phase is the embryo or the four dunes. Here the four embryo and four dunes form where the alkali alkalinity or um, uh, salt contents are very high and with very less vegetation. So, any small uh, abstraction if it is present in the form of uh, rock or debris they start accumulating uh, they, they start accumulating sand over them and in the subsequent time uh, if uh, the wind speeds uh, we, along with the wind they can be they can form small uh, embryo dunes. Okay. So, and after that so, the, so, here there is actually very less or no vegetation, but uh, when you move uh, when this uh, sand dunes uh, move uh, here in direction. So, these are actually move these two dunes are mostly the uh, mobile dunes. Okay. So, uh, embryo dunes, four dunes and yellow dunes they are comprised of mobile dunes. So, they, they change their uh, place okay. means uh, like sand dunes they can migrate here. Uh, so, these are the yellow dunes these are relatively uh, very young dunes. Okay. 
So, we can see some kind of vegetation here uh, in case of yellow dunes, uh, whereas after, uh, when you uh, see uh, when you move further move away from the seashore, you can we can see some kind of uh, permanent vegetation cover here. So, and thus we can see some kind of soil formation also over this region. Okay. You can see some kind of uh, permanent vegetation and uh, soil formation, permanent vegetation and soil for formation. So, these are mostly known as the grey dunes. So, grey dune and uh, grey dune and this also sometimes comprises of dune slag which has uh, high moisture content uh, and these are mostly the fixed dunes. And after that if you can see there is a mature vegetation which has sufficient availability of vegetation as well as soil. Okay. So, what happens? So, the over this regions uh, initial stages these are actually the pioneer species. Okay. So, this uh, here actually the species are mostly pioneer. Okay. So, when this pioneer uh, species when they die they form a, a humus uh, the uh, humus which will be which can be used by a subsequent uh, subsequent species. So, here the species are mostly pioneer and as we move from uh, x to y the the maturity increases and will get more mature uh, vegetation as well as uh, the soil here. Okay. Okay. So, what uh, so to summarize this we can see if you move from this pioneers uh, from this place x to y. So, let us say where x the pioneer species the species are mostly pioneer and here the steady or uh, equilibrium is made, is established here in the climax stage. So, you can see pH is actually declines and alkalinity decreases as you move from one place to uh, from uh, along this direction. So, uh, pH increases uh, decreases and it becomes more acidic here it was more alkaline and here it is more acidic or it can find uh, balance. So, it becomes uh, stable here. The salinity also it decreases when we move from this to the uh, from x to y. Similarly, the age of dunes increases. So, these dunes are mostly mobile dunes, okay. they change their uh, their shape um, and the, uh, the direction depending on the wind speed and this thing. So, their shape gets changed, but here the uh, dunes are mostly stable. Then the available nutri nutrient contents increases because the uh, pioneer species they make favorable conditions. The pioneer species from previous stage add humus to the sand that makes condition more favorable for the subsequent uh, uh, stages of uh, species. Then the available water, co water content increases here, uh, then humus contents also increase as you see. The humus if you can see here it was around 1 percent, here let us say it was around 2.5 percent, here it was uh, in the grey dune area it was around 20 percent and on the mature side or uh, the uh, heath or woodland uh, region it is around 40 percent humus content. Soil depth also if you can see the soil depth also increases uh, as you move from uh, from x to y. The shelter shelter is also increasing and the height of the dunes are also you can see they are increasing as you move from x to y. Okay. So, here you can see around you can found around 50 to 20 meter height. Okay. So, these are mostly uh, the uh, migration of uh, how, how the sand dunes forms. Okay. This is another uh, uh, image which represent the formation of dunes. Okay. Uh, this is a let us say beach, you can see the height is increasing as you move in more inland, humus content is also increasing, percentage uh, sand and moisture is also increasing here and vegetation is becoming more permanent. Here it was mostly sand and couch or uh, lime grass which can be which can be submerged in, into the uh, salt water, but here vegetation is more stable here and here also the vegetation you can see some kind of maramar cotton grass. Uh, are uh, as there and pH obviously is actually less here compared to here. So, here the pH was the uh, soil was mostly alkaline, here it is more acidic or uh, less, uh, less alkaline. Okay. So, with that I uh, will stop here for this, uh, uh, for this lecture. So, in this lecture we have seen uh, various uh, kind of sand dunes, their formation uh, and the process that are involved in the formation of sand dune. We have also seen the drift potential. Uh, in, in, in different directions and uh, we have seen the uh, uh, we have seen the formation of sand dune coastal sand dunes how they form and how the alkalinity and how the uh, previous species uh, they helps in uh, they favors the formation of new species uh, so, so that the equilibrium can be reached okay so with that we'll stop here for this class